Well, Alan Tudge, we're hearing a lot of good intentions today about the tone of the House. Will it last? I think it will. We've just elected Tony Smith to be the Speaker. I think he will do an outstanding job. He's a relatively young member at 47. He's been in the Parliament, though, for 14 years, so brings a lot of experience. I think he's respected on both sides and I think he will bring a good discipline and a good tone to the Parliament. Well, just talking about Tony Smith, he's been knocking around in one job or another, in student politics, as an advisor or as an MP, in politics for 27 years now. Can he just flick the switch to be non-partisan in one day? Well, I think he's demonstrated that he can do that through his chairmanship of the Joint Standing Committee on Electoral Matters, where he worked very effectively with all the parties to bring together a unanimous port report calling for electoral reform of the Senate. So there's a good illustration of where he can do that. And I think that members of the Labor Party do acknowledge that, and even Adam Bant acknowledged that in his remarks this morning. But there must be times when the pressure's on there and inevitably his non-partisanship will be questioned. He's, he's looking at, he's talking about a house that needn't be rude and needn't be loud, but it, it just by definition almost is, isn't it? It doesn't have to be, and that was his message this morning. Yes, it will always be robust, and it should be a robust chamber, because this is the ultimate chamber for the clash of ideas and of ideals. But it doesn't always have to be as loud and as rude as what Tony Smith was saying, and that's what his ambition is for the remainder of this term. Now, how did he arrive at this position not to be in the party room from today onwards? Was that something he informed you all about this morning, or was it something that was collectively decided by the party room? Oh, no, he had decided that himself when he put his hand forward, his name forward a week ago, um, to his colleagues to say that he might be standing. And he said then that he would not be uh, participating in the party room. And listen, I actually think that's an important symbolic measure, but it's also important from a practical perspective as well, that he does remove himself from that the day-to-day -day party political discussions in the joint party room every week. You're from that part of Melbourne. The argument against doing this sort of thing in the past was that it might disenfranchise or leave less well represented the members of his electorate. Do you think that's going to apply in the seat of Casey? I hope it doesn't, and I don't think it will. Um, he's been an outstanding member there in the seat of Casey. He's just next door to my electorate in Outer Eastern Melbourne. Um, he's been there since 2001, and during that role, he's also held quite senior um, portfolio positions as well, which do take you away from your electorate for some time. I find that myself in my parliamentary secretary role. And, and I think this will be similar. He'll be able to do the balance between the two. He will absolutely still be a very effective local member. Um, that's what he's known for, that's what he's good at, and he'll continue to do that. All right. Well, you're touching there on the issue of, of travel and entitlements. P Parliament may want to set a higher tone today, and yet it's still got that scandal rattling around in the background. Do you have your own view about what should stay and what should go in this review process? Things like family travel, for instance. Do you have a broad definition of where you think it, what you think it should look like? Listen, I have some of my own views, Greg, and I'll put my own views forward through the review process. But sometimes there's some grey areas which we do need to take a bit of time to sort out. Family travel is one of those. We've got a number of people at the moment, for example, men and women, who have got young babies with them. Now, inevitably, they'll want to uh, travel from time to time when we are up in Canberra or further afield. And so we don't want to knock out that altogether because otherwise there could be a concern about um, being, being a family-friendly environment, given that we do have to spend half of our time here in Canberra. Party work, uh, particularly party fundraisers, can they be justified in the future? Well, this will be uh, under review through the Root and Bat Branch Entitlements Review, which the Prime Minister has set up. Um, Again, in some instances, I think it can be justified, but I can also see the countervailing argument. Um, we are, at the end of the day, we have multiple roles as members of parliaments. One of those roles is being a member of a political party, and I think that does need to be taken into account when this review is being undertaken. And as it is being undertaken, do you think there's a degree of bipartisanship? Some people are calling it a truce or a ceasefire. Is that something that you're observing has 
been negotiated or have people just fallen into that pattern given all the scandal of the last few uh, weeks? I, I don't know whether there's been any discussions or not. Um, what I do know is that the Prime Minister has set up a committee to look at the entitlements issue which consists of a member of both, uh, a former member of both the Liberal Party and the Labor Party, respective, respected, respected members in each case, um, we do want to get a bipartisan agreement um, on the entitlements review. All right. Now, when Parliament gets back to regular duties tomorrow, the government enters this session, according to the polls, slipping further back. At what point does panic set in and say that a trend is emerging and you've been unable to shift it? Oh, listen, Greg, polls move up and down, as you know, over the months. And well, the latest move is down. Well, the latest move is down, but previously we were up to, I think, 49, 51 um, a few weeks ago. So, yes, they're down some weeks, they're up other weeks. We've got an absolutely core focus on our twin pillars of economic security and national security, and we're going to be laser-like focused on ensuring that um, those two things are there, that there are job opportunities for people. People uh, feel as if they're getting their cost of living pressures addressed because electricity prices are coming down. They're the types of measures that we'll be focused on. And you've been talking about those for quite a while. Where's the evidence that they have any political potency? for the government? Well, we'll be talking about those things right up until the election, Greg, because they're the things which are most important to everyday Australians. They want to feel secure um, in their house, in their nation, in their city, but also they want to ensure that there are economic opportunities for them and their children to be able to get jobs, to get ahead, to become wealthier. So they're our twin focal points. That's what we'll be continuing to, to fight for in the weeks ahead. All right. Alan Touch, thank you. Thanks so much, Greg.